Hey everyone, this is Dana from NextGen, and I am just so happy and pleased that you are with me on this fabulous Freedom Financial Friday. I know that you're usually you're used to seeing me doing my fitness routine, but to, today we're going to do Me Inc. our 2022 personal budget. So with Me Inc we decided we're going to introduce this new series to talk about our finances and financial wellness. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we did the introduce, introduction to Me, Inc. to let you know what we were all about. And then uh, later on in that week, we got you in preparation. So what we were talking about, and if you haven't um, seen the videos yet, uh, please make sure you go back to see those. But in the preparation stage, we what we were looking to do was to take a look at what we spent in 2020, what we spent in 2021. And then last week, we did what we call an assessment. So what you're doing is you're going through and you're looking at what you spent, look at some areas where you can improve and actually assign different um, things that you needed to do. There's some things that you spent money on that you have no idea. And we talked about putting that in the miscellaneous category, but actually just being mindful about what you spent. So today we're gonna talk about a 2022 budget and we have someone that we're actually going to use so you can actually see how it works. So we're going to use the Excel spreadsheet to actually um, go through the budget. Now, you can use it with a piece of paper, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, you can use an app, you can use anything that you need to use. But I thought that it would be easier for us to do it with the Excel spreadsheet. So let's take a profile and we're going to use Angela. La Angela is not her real name. And, but the numbers are correct. So the picture and the name are fictitious, but everything else is correct. So Angela, <clears throat> and I did write my notes here. So we worked with Angela and she's a 45 year old mechanical engineer from Randallstown, Maryland. She's divorced with two adult sons who are self-sufficient she purchased her home in 2018 after renting for 10 years. Her financial goals, and we will look at that. Let's see what her financial goals are. Her financial goals are to um, have multiple streams of income. And she needed this after her divorce because she started her own business, but it's part time. She made some mistakes along the way. So we're gonna be using the budget to help her with um, reliable and multiple streams of income, making sure that we tweak her budget if need be. She has an emergency fund and she does have some savings. There's some debt that she wants to eliminate and her goal is to retire um, by age 57. And from that, she wants to create generational wealth for her children, well, actually for her grandchildren. And let's see what else. Okay, so we took a look at her expenses and we found out that she's spending, she spent 40, with all the adjustments that she needed to make, she spent approximately $48,000 a year. So what we'll do is we'll go through each one of the categories and show you the adjustments that she made. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share my screen here. So what I'll do is share my screen and actually go to the Excel spreadsheet. OK. 
Okay. So hopefully you can see that this is her budget. Now, this is set up a little bit different than some people are used to seeing. So what I have up here is the income, which is what is projected. And this is what we're going to do today. And then starting in January, she's going to actually put down what she act her actual income is, along with in the categories that we have here, we're going to have her projected cost, which we'll do today. And then starting in January, she will fill out the actual cost. Now, what's really fun about this Excel spreadsheet is that she can see based on here, let me give you an example. So right now, let's say that her mortgage is $1,500. We'll put the actual amount in in a minute. And let's say that her actual cost was $1,500. It stays green. Let's say that it actually went up to $1,600. And I'll talk about when that could happen. Then you will see that this turns red and this is $100 difference, which will adjust her budget. And we will put in the um, net income when we get finished. So that's one thing. And let's say that it was, let's say $14.75. Then we're in the green. So this way she has a visual of how she's doing with her budget. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and zero this out. And I also have, again, notes on each one of the categories. So she used to pay um, for rent, but she purchased a new construction home in 2018. So what her mortgage consisted of was an escrow and principal and interest. Now, she did not have what we call PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. And if you want more information on that, we can do that in a separate video. But I actually did a blog on what private mortgage insurance is. So her mortgage consisted of principal, interest, and what we call escrow. And escrow is taxes real estate taxes, property taxes, and homeowner's insurance. So she did re receive a lot of mail talking about, did she want to um, refinance her mortgage to get a lower um, payment? Now, while that looks good in the beginning, one of the challenges you'll find is when you refinance your mortgage, it actually, you're gonna be adding on fees that is not going to reduce your principal. And I also talked about that in a, in a um, video that I will have for you up at the top so you can see what I'm talking about. So her objective is she does have a fixed rate 30 year mortgage. Her goal is to eliminate that mortgage in five to seven years. So it doesn't matter what the interest rate is. So that's with the principal and interest. The next thing she did was for the insurance, she looked for ways to reduce the homeowner's insurance. So she made sure she had a security system and she had what we call a multi -poly, multiple policy discount, which means she used this um, insurance company for her homeowner's insurance and she uses it for her auto insurance. So she was able to save some money there. Additionally, for the taxes, the state of Maryland has what they call homestead tax credit for your primary residence. So she looked into that and so she took advantage. So that had her taxes go down and with the other adjustment, her insurance went down. Now, as I said before, she used to rent. And the challenge was, um, I wanna say in 2018, 2019, she had trouble getting back her deposit. And we're gonna be talking about the rental do's and don't in a subsequent video. But I want to let you know, when she did all of these things, her mortgage is now 
$1,481.17. Even though she had a fixed rate mortgage, the mortgage can change if you have what they call escrow, and that's the insurance and the taxes. And a lot of times those things go up and your mortgage will be adjusted accordingly. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take off um, the mortgage because she doesn't have one. So that is her mortgage. Now, <clears throat> for her phone, she has a combination of phone, cable, and um, Wi-Fi. And she's, she is under a two-year contract, which they offer a discount. This meets her needs for right now. So we'll go ahead and put that amount in. And it is $215. Okay. Now, um, for her electricity, she has a combination of electricity and gas. So that comes under one bill. They separate her usage. So let's see. She, because she has a new home, she has energy efficient appliances. So that's good. And she's also walking around her house to make sure that it's properly insulated and that there's no challenge with the home. Now, the good news about having a new construction is she also has the warranty that goes with it. So she wants to make sure that um, that is taken care of. So I'll go ahead and put down the electricity and in this case, um, gas. And that amount is $175. Now, so what we did was we took the amounts of everything that she, she purchased and divided it by 12. So she may not be paying some of these things every month, but what we did was to kind of get an idea of what she would be doing. We just took the amount, the 48,000, and divided each category by 12. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. <clears throat> With the water and sewage, that is paid quarterly. That's not paid every month. Now she does have some savings. So let's say that something occurred earlier in the year. She does have enough of her savings to pay those bills. So that's one thing we don't have to worry about. So for the water and sewage, that is $15, okay? And as I said before, the cable is included in the phone and um, the Wi-Fi. So there's nothing there, okay? We don't have anything for waste removal. Now, she does have um, a line item for um, maintenance and repairs around the house. And these are for things that, um, that she might want to do to the house that's not part of the warranty. So we did a set aside $100 for that. Okay, and we don't have anything for supplies. Now, her homeowners association, which she does have, did go up. And it includes the cost for um, lawn maintenance. So even though this price that I'm gonna put down here includes lawn maintenance, the maintenance and repairs or anything like that, that's what she's using to plant flowers or anything that she wants to put in her, um, in her yard. So the homeowners association went up and it is $107. Okay, so based on what we see here, her housing expenses is $2,093.17, which you can see here, okay? So that's the cost for her home. So now what we'll do is we'll move to transportation. So, <clears throat> so in 2018, she also purchased a new vehicle and it came with a um, bumper to bumper warranty. Let me see. Yes, she financed it. She refinanced the vehicle for 36 months. Originally, it was for 60 months, but she got a lower rate 
and she also received two hundred dollars for refinancing it with the credit union. So that's the reason why her payment for her vehicle is higher. So it's five hundred and fifteen dollars to seventeen cents, and of course this rounds it up. She doesn't have anything here for um, bus and taxi fare because she did have a what they call a um, bus pass for emergencies that she purchased in 2020 that she hasn't used. So there's no additional expense that we'll have down here. For her insurance, she pays her insurance every year. And what she did, okay, let's see what we have here. Because remember before I told you she had a multi-policy with her um, homeowner's insurance. She also has a safe driver discount because of her age, she gets a discount and she also increased her deductible. And she also looked into increasing her deductible on her homeowner's insurance as well. So her insurance is actually $1,200 a year. That's how she pays it um per year and they also give her a discount because she pays in advance so that's why we have a hundred dollars right here okay for licensing it's every other year excuse me for the licensing let's see if we have for that it's every other year but we do have a line item for that so go ahead and put that down and for her um, fuel on her gas, well, we've noticed that gas has gone up. So what she does is she combines her trips. So if she's going to the grocery store, she combines it with the cleaners or the car wash or anything like that. So all of that um, is included. Now, um, you won't see a price for the car wash because she bought a, um, a discount card for car washes. And since she's not using it, she still has a balance on it. So on the fuel, we have $75. Now, what is not used this month, of course, will roll over. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, we do have maintenance. Now, I did tell you that in the car, the maintenance was included. But the good news is, is that she did have a line item for tires. And those are not usually included. So we're going ahead and put down a line on for tires. So for her transportation, we're looking at 761, excuse me, $760.70. So let's go ahead and scroll down to insurance. Now these, this spreadsheet is um, pre-filled, is filled out. So some of these things will apply to her and some of these won't. And you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. So for the home insurance, it's included in her escrow. So there's nothing there. For her health insurance, it is actually taken out, um, out of her paycheck. She is going to look into a health savings account. So next week, we're going to talk about the advantages of a health savings account. So for right now, I'm not going to put anything there because it's taken out of her paycheck. Now, what she does do is she looks at um, whether um, she wants to change providers, whether she wants to go um, to a PPI or whatever. So she does review her needs. And right now, it not, has not changed. So for her life insurance, she pretty much lined it up to when she turns 60. So she bought a 20 year term, which actually is a lower annual um, cost. She pays by the year. And so even though I put a monthly price here, she's actually paying for the year. And that is $42.25. Okay, so we have that for <clears throat> the insurance. Let's go to food. Now, when we talk about food, we're talking about not only, we're talking about groceries. We're not only talking about food, we're talking about personal care and household supplies that she would get at the grocery store. 
So she's a big, she's big on meal preparation. She goes to the store with a list. And for the non-perishable items, she buys them in bulk if when they're on sale. So these are things that she's going to need. So with the the projected cost is $550. Now, it does seem like a lot, but as I said before, the groceries is including her personal care items as well as household items like cleaning supplies if she purchased it there or um, those types of things. Now, you definitely want to come back and take a look at the health savings account because some of the things that she's buying at the grocery store, she can actually use her health savings account to purchase them. So you definitely want to come back when we um, talk about the health savings account. So on the um, dining out, she doesn't do a lot of eating out because remember, she's a business owner. So what she does is she tries to have her dining out as a business expense. So when she goes out, she's basically going out to discuss business. So I'll go ahead and put that amount there, okay? So we're at $575 a month for food. Again, this is fluctuating. This is her plan, this is her budget based on previous spending and what she plans to spend in 2022, keeping in mind that prices have been going up. Okay, as I said before, this is, um, she doesn't have any pets. So let's go to the personal care. Now, a lot of times um, with the medical, the medical will be for, um, let's say, glasses or any type of medicine um, that she's that she's responsible for paying or any type of copay. We do have a note on this too. So you talk about your copay, your prescriptions, and your glasses. So again, a lot of these things can be um, reimbursed through her health savings account, which we're going to discuss next week. So for that, we will put a hundred dollars. Okay. She does not um, do any hair and nails outside. Um, she's working on a plan. So for right now, there's nothing there. Um, for clothing, um, she feels that she has enough clothes. So um, we don't have anything there. Um, if she has to do any type of dry cleaning, she does have a line item for that. So we're looking at $125 for um, her personal care. Okay. So that's one column. Let's go ahead up to this column for entertainment. Now, for some reason, the only thing she has down for entertainment is the movies because she is a big believer in the public libraries. So she looks at what the public, now that the public libraries are open now, she takes advantage of everything that they have. So what she has is $50 for movies. I'm thinking that's just a placeholder, so I'll go ahead and put that down. So for entertainment, um, she has, $50. Okay. So let's see. The last thing we have here is um, she, during the past, I want to say seven years, she's worked very hard to pay all of her credit card debt. So the only thing that she has left is the student loan debt. Um, let's see. Her balance is $29,000. So on the student loan, she pays $300. I believe that's through her credit union. So we have that there. Okay. So let's take a look at the taxes. All right. So she completes and files her own personal taxes. 
She reviewed her um, federal and state exemptions and her goal is to not overpay her taxes. So she makes the adjustments where she needs to. And again, she files her own taxes and they actually come out um, before she receives her paycheck. So that's why that's not going to be included in her budget. But she does review um, her tax liability every year. And that's why we're going to go ahead and talk about the health savings account next week so you can see um, the results of her homework that she had to do. Okay, so let's go up here. So, as I said before, her annual expenses were just under $48,000. So when you divide that by 12, of course, you're going to get 4,000. So we are pretty close to being balanced as far as how and what categories we're putting her expenses. So we have two, we have some more left. So I just wanted to show you that we're on point and where the, it came from. So, <clears throat> She has a retirement account that, it, again, it comes out of her paycheck. She doesn't have an investment account yet, but she does have a savings account. And it's just over um, $25,000. Now, you would say, hey, why don't she take that $25,000 and pay off her student loan debt? She did consider doing that. The reason why she didn't do that was because her goal was to have one year of expenses in her savings account in case something happened. If she took that money and put it on her student loan debt, then it would deplete her savings. And if anything happened, she wouldn't be able to, um, she would have to go into debt to do that. So what she decided to do was to grow her savings. So in this case, she decided that she wanted to put $1,500 a month in there. Okay. So that would grow to where she would have one year of savings in the bank. Okay. Now for her charities and gifts, she put aside uh, $500. Of course, that's going to get larger but this is what she decided that she wanted to do. So hopefully um, this makes sense, okay? Now let's look at the last category and that is for legal services, okay? So she did review her estate planning and there's no changes that need to be made. So she's pretty good as far as an attorney for the year. She doesn't have any alimony or payments on liens and judgments or anything like that. So that's why it is her legal category as at zero. And the bookkeeper that she has is actually for her business. So what we're looking at right now is her personal account. So let's go up here. So her goal is to have multiple and reliable streams of income. Her goal is to have one year's worth of income, excuse me, one year of expenses, not income. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. Sometimes our income may not be enough. And so we make adjustments where we really don't need to. So that's why we did the exercise of the expenses first. So now that we have the expenses at 5946, let's go ahead and put in what her um, income is. Now she gets paid every other week. So what we did was we added up her net income and then divided it by 12. Now, what we did not include was any bonuses or any extra money she might be getting from her job. We did not include her business income. This is her personal budget. So 
So let's go ahead and fill in her net income. Okay. So as you can see, she will have enough money to pay all of her bills if she is sticking with her budget. Again, when she's going through here, and let's say that, okay, so her mortgage will pretty much be, the, be consistent through the year. They change it every year as needed based on the escrow. So this is gonna stay pretty much the same. But let's say that her electricity and gas went up. She can make adjustments throughout Me. She can make adjustments throughout the year as need be. So let's say this was actually 200. Okay? Then you'll see the adjustments will need to be made. So that's not going to be a challenge. So hopefully you got something out of this spreadsheet. And you can see that budgeting really isn't painful. If you look at each category, and then you try to decide on areas where you can reduce. We're not focusing on the income until we're finished. And then you may decide, let's say that um, the expenses actually was more than the income. Then you know that you're going to have to probably make other adjustments, which may include increasing your income. So this is basically the cleanest way to find out if there's any, what we call any leaks. So if you have any comments, please make sure to put them either in the comment section or, um, yeah, go ahead and put those in the comment section. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time with me to go through our personal budget. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Now, in the following weeks, we're gonna be talking about different things as a result of this budget. So hopefully you got something out of it. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.